to be artists, maybe in any discipline, but particularly in yours, do you have any special advice for them? I think it boils down to kind of, you know, burrow through all of the, 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 the many things that could be said about this and come down to the essence. It really boils down to this. Um, if you are going to be pursuing the arts, I can certainly speak for my area, filmmaking as such, but I know that applies to the other arts. It's something you should do only if you have no alternative, only if there's absolutely nothing else that appeals to you, because it's a challenging path and for every success there are going to be many failures, and for every moment of, of triumph there will be setbacks. More than, and it's a, it's a steep price to pay. And if you're going to do it, and you're going to go through the, you know, we are here and it's a wonderful couple of days in Ottawa and we're, and it's, it's very glamorous and it's very pleasant, but, but for every moment like this, there are countless others that are sheer suffering. So I would, my advice to those who, who, you know, who ask me is always, um, are you sure there's nothing else that you want to do? Because if there is, do it. If there's really nothing else that you want to do or that you can possibly do, then okay. Um, I wish you well. <laughs> what was the best advice someone ever gave you? Well, so when I was a student at McGill, I, I, one of my professors was the late John Grierson, who was the founder of the National Film Board. And he gave me a good piece of advice because he asked me towards the end of our semester uh, what I was planning to do with my life. And I said, well, my plan is for you to uh, call the commissioner of the National Film Board and arrange for him to meet with me and hire me. And his advice was, you know, I'll do it for you if you insist, but, you know, they're not going to hire you. But you can get a job there if you fill out an application form that the receptionist will give you and apply for a job as a driver. They have a high turnover and you'll probably get in. And then, you know, once you're inside, you know, use your wits. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't take his advice, but he was right. Do you believe that in Canada that film and television is a good investment for philanthropists, for volunteers? Is it? a good return on investment when we invest in this industry? Well, I don't think film and television lives through philanthropy. Uh, you know, this is a place where art and commerce intersect. Uh, it does, fil tel film and television, particularly film, ha you know, needs government support not only in Canada, but in every country in the world, except for you know, the place where they make X-Men and Superman and Batman. Um, but whether it's Germany or France or Australia or, 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 or the UK, in the film is an extremely high-risk medium that more often than not never recovers its cost. So if we want to have tell our stories on the big screen and have them be our emissaries at the Cannes Film Festival or at the Academy Awards, and then there has to be the public will to actually have government support of filmmaking. Um, and there is, and I would think that it, you know, it couldn't survive without public support, not in this country and not anywhere else in the world, except for the making of the kind of you know um, superhero comic book movies, which are, to me, a world unto themselves. Right. Um, that's just the reality. But as philanthropy goes, I mean, there are. I've never come across a philanthropist who wants to. In people who invest in movies, like pr in, from the private sector, like to see their money back and the mm -hmm. profit. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I can't blame them. Mm -hmm.